Okay, we're just going to get started in a minute or so. Um, just waiting for one or two more. Thanks. Okay, hello. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Andrew McMahon. Um, I'm just going to do a quick introduction on this one. Um, so if uh, it's, there's no long sales spiel on this, it's just a quick introduction. I will be sitting here in case Chris's voice gives out because he's a little bit croaky today, I'm afraid. Um, so thank you for attending. We're going to go through a session on Vault and Naviate and how they can help you to improve your productivity. Everybody's on mute at the moment, so trying to interrupt you, you won't be able to make any comments there, but there is a chat box available on the panel. So if you have any questions, if you want to put questions in there and put your name on there, we will be uh, able to either respond at the end of the session or uh, we'll get back to you after the session if you put the details in there. So um, the focus for the, this session is looking at um, Vault and Naviate and how they can work together to help you to become more efficient. We all know that um, Vault is a great way of helping you to manage data and to control the information, share the information that we've got inside our design tools. But uh, there are quite a few tasks that we need to to perform on a regular basis quite a few exercises where people are wanting, for instance, to produce secondary file formats or to export information into ERP systems. That's something that can be done through Vault, but it's a bit of a laborious task. So with Naviate, we're able to give some extra tools to help that process. And I think I'll now hand over to Chris and he can talk about the details of that. Okay, cheers, Andrew. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, as Andrew said, today we're going to take a look at Vault and sort of typical processes and challenges that we come across, and then we'll go on to looking at um, Naviate and how that can hopefully help as well. Um, just a little bit of background about myself. Um, I am one of the senior consultants here at Symmetry CADQ. I've been working with data management and design automation on and off for about 10 years now. And uh, prior to, to working at Symmetry, uh, I did work actually at one of our customers using Vault professionally um, on some rather large projects. Um, just a little quote for you that uh, I found on the internet. I think it's quite going to be quite relevant today. There is nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which should not be done at all. One of the big themes we're going to look at today is looking at certain tasks that we do in Vault as part of our workflow, either manually or um, that we automate currently that maybe we don't need to do at all or we can automate. So it's quite a nice quote, it really fits with what we're trying to show you here today. Okay. So first of all, Symmetry and Kaku have uh, an idea which is to help you remove waste from your processes um, using lean solutions. We see Vault as being a great solution and the ways that we can help you set up Vault and the ways that we can use Vault allow us to build on our design department processes and get them more efficient. And hopefully you'll see that the tools that have been generated to work alongside Vault can help you get even leaner. So let's take a look at some uh, workflows first of all. Um, I'm going to apologize to start with. We have uh, a little bit of PowerPoint and then we'll get to, to actually seeing some of the products. So bear with me. So first of all, what sort of data are we typically managing in Vault? Um, well, we all know that we can manage part files, sub-assemblies, and our 3D models. We can reuse some of those files in other 3D models. And from that, we can also generate our bill of materials and get that out of Inventor, maybe as a Excel file, store that in Vault, or maybe we're using Vault items. We can generate our 2D drawings. 
Um, they could be inventor drawings, they can be AutoCAD drawings that are associated to the model. It could be from a supplier or a customer also. We've got our calculations, our FEA reports, um, spare parts manuals, O&M manuals, you name it, we're storing that data in Vault. Um, but there are also other people storing their data in Vault as well. We have sales, marketing, project uh, engineers, project managers, all storing data in Vault. Um, and that can be in any format that you can imagine. So PDFs, drawings, DXFs, you name it. Okay, we've seen it all, I think, now. When we're actually working with Bolt, though, we are typically talking about document release processes, document uh, management within the design department. Um, we're going to take a look at a typical process and some of the challenges that we probably face uh, when we're using uh, any document management system, but in this, this case, Bolt. So first of all, our documents go into Bolt. They go in a work in progress state. Um, I'm assuming that most people know of document processes um, within Bolt. They're available in Bolt Workgroup and Bolt Professional. Uh, those of you on Bolt Basic, you haven't got this. You're putting your files in and you're using Bolt as a document store. So Vault Workgroup and Professional, we can actually assign files a lifecycle state and a revision and watch that file go through the process. Typically, a file goes in and work in progress, it will be writable by everyone. And from that, we maybe move that document onto a check or a review state. Um, again, we can set up the processes however we wish. As we go through that check and review, we might move that round in the cycle a few times. However, once it's checked and we move on to the approval state, this is when we come across some of the kind of bottlenecks that design departments typically have. We have a user that has checked that drawing. So what they want to do is they want to be able to add their name and the date to that drawing, to that document. And they want to do that before they can move it on to approval. So how do we do this currently in Vault? Well, the, the most typical way we come across is that users have writable access to the file at that point and they change the properties. But more and more we're coming across companies saying, well, actually, it's in a check state. We don't want people being able to edit that file. So how do we actually manage this? We want that file to be read only. How can they fill that information in? And why should we be filling that information in? We're moving it on a state. The vault knows who has moved that file on. So surely we should have a way of capturing that information and automatically applying that onto the drawing. The same goes when we're going from the approved state back to work in progress. If we filled in checking information, when we go back to work in progress, that information is still filled in. So how can we uh, clear that information or clear relevant properties? Again, we can build up this process. We might have uh, external reviewers, so we might have a document control uh, department where we send PDFs of our drawings to that user or that department to send out to our clients. Some of you I know will be using Buzzsaw, which comes with Vault Professional to do that, but those of you on Vault Workgroup, you haven't got any way of interacting there. Again, if we move from approval on to release, we've got the same issue of how do we fill in that information? So there, there are lots of things that we want to do on these life cycles that we can't currently do. Again, if we build up on this a little bit, one of the other things that we want to be able to do is mark files as obsolete. So again, is there a way of adding an obsolete watermark to a drawing? Again, we know we can do this with items, but for those of us not using items, which is the majority of us, how can we do this? This workflow is generally used by the design team within Vault. But we have to remember that the data that we're producing is also made available to lots of other departments throughout the company. And they won't necessarily be able to use the CAD files or want to use the CAD files. So we may have production that want the building materials, after sales that will want PDFs, project control that maybe want PDFs and DXFs, Suppliers, they'll definitely want DXFs. Uh, sales and marketing, they may want Word documents, Excel documents. Um, 
So that there are lots of different formats that we'll want for these different teams. And again, how do we get that data out to them? And how do we produce that data in a lean fashion? So again, looking at the, the, the challenges we've got then, uh, in particular with a, a document workflow, we've got the property manipulation. How do we fill those properties in? Updating those properties automatically. How can we do that? How can we clear these properties? One of my favorites, how can we automate certain tasks that we do? So there may be some design checks or certain tasks like swapping title blocks out that we do within Inventor. Can we incorporate that into the workflow to make sure those tasks are done automatically? We might want to extract the bill of materials out to send to an ERP system. Again, we know if we're on Vault Pro that we can do this with items, but what if we're not on Vault Professional? The way a lot of our clients do this is that once they've released the data, they open Inventor, open up the released file, and then export the bill of materials. But again, that's not automated. It's a very manual, time-consuming task. We want to be able to look at, can we create secondary file formats? So PDFs, that's probably the most requested function I come across with Vault. I have a release drawing. I want to generate a PDF inside Vault that everyone can access, either on the network or via the web client. How can I do this? And there are lots of tools out there that can do that. This is just one of them that I think is going to be relevant. Another type of format that we get asked for all the time is DXFs and step files. So how can we generate those? Again, uh, with the, the right, uh, generate those for the right documents at the right time in the process. And finally, because we're doing lots of tasks within Vault, we all use the job processor. So how can we manage the job processor so that we can reduce the queue of, uh, of issues or, or uh, warnings that we're seeing and actually just get to problem files? Um, hopefully, those of you that know the job processor, you'll have come across one in the job queue called a non-tip version. And that's where Vault can't actually generate uh, DWF um, correctly because it thinks it's looking at the wrong version of that document. So how can we manage that queue and just clear those sort of jobs out? As I said, there are a few workarounds and manual processes that we're putting in place to do all this. Um, lots of you have some customization and bespoke programming. Others of you have gone onto the App Store and downloaded plugins uh, from a variety of third parties. But we feel we've got a solution that will work with Vault that allows us to do all of this in one application. And that's what we're going to take a look at. How can we take those workflows and actually augment them to automate these tasks? <coughs> Pardon me. So the tool we're going to take a look at with Vault is Navigate Vault. Um, those of you that haven't seen Vault Workgroup and Professional before, you're going to see plenty of it in a minute. Um, but those of you that have seen Vault Workgroup and Professional, you should uh, see Navigate in use and, and, and be able to see how it will work with your workflows. So Navigate is a tool developed by Symmetry CampQ and it has several main functions that it can do. Data export to ERP, creation of secondary file formats, property updates, property cards, and one of the latest additions is iLogic automation. Uh, and that really has added a, a lot of strength and power to this product. It sits on top of Vault Workgroup, Vault Professional, but interestingly, it also works with Vault Office. Now, for those of you that don't know Vault Office, that is a cheaper license of Vault where users can log in to the system, they can access files, they can change the state of the files, but what they can't do is edit CAD files it is restricted to Office documents or non-CAD data that they can actually edit. This causes a bit of a problem, again, uh, through a typical workflow, because we have design managers logging in with Vault Office who can change the state of something in Vault but can't actually sign the name against it. So Navier allows us to address that 
issue as well. Navigate works on two different uh, two different areas. We have something called actions and something called custom actions. So actions are the day-to-day -day nuts and bolts of what we add to our workflows. So data export, secondary file formats, property updates. All of these actions can be tied to a particular um, state change. So for instance, when I release my document, I may want to generate a PDF file. We have lots of different types of output. So if we want to export bills and materials, we can export CSV, XML, SQL. We can export vault properties as well as uh, the inventor properties. If we're dealing with secondary file format creation, we can export PDFs, AutoCAD DWGs, DXFs, STEP files, SAP files, and if there are any other file formats that you want, that's one of the beauties of this, we can look at building that in as well. Finally, property updates. We may want to say that at a particular state change, we want to fill in uh, a, user's, uh, a username, or we may want to clear a property. So we can do all that within Navigate as well. The other type of um, task that we have in Navigate is something called custom actions. And custom actions um, come with Navigate Vault, but they are available for you to build yourself. So if you are okay at doing some customization and uh, a bit of VB, then you can build your own functions and have Navigate Vault act as a platform to run those functions. So the sort of custom actions that we have already are the ability to do email notifications, create drawing lists, and run iLogic rules. And again, we're gonna take a look at some of those as we go through the demo today. All of these actions need to happen at the right time in our workflow, and they need to happen in the right order as well. There is no point in outputting a, a PDF when we release a document, and then afterwards filling in the approved by information. So what we're able to do is take lots of different actions and custom actions and actually move these, order them, and get these actions to happen as a set at the state change. Okay? And we can either set these so that they manually run or just automatically run in the background. In a lot of cases where we have customers using Navigate, the users don't actually know that these tasks are happening in the background. So let's um, dive straight in and take a look at it. <coughs> Pardon me. So for those of you that uh, don't know Vault Workgroup, um, as you'll see, it's very similar to Vault Basic. Um, we have a couple of additional tabs down at the bottom. These are from the data standard extension that comes with Vault. And we have a property grid at the side. Every file that gets added to Vault automatically can be assigned a state and a revision. And what we're able to do is we're able to take our file and tell it that we want to change state. So in this case, I might want to move to a review state. When I hit OK, what we should find is that the Vault will go through and move these files to review. And with Vault Workgroup and Vault Pro, what we're able to do is set certain tasks to happen as we move on to our next state. Generally, in Vault Workgroup and Pro, these um, tasks that we're able to do are things like bumping revision, updating revision tables, and synchronizing properties. Using Navigate Vault, we can build in other actions to happen at this time. So for instance, one of the things that you'll see here is that by moving the state on, I've filled in automatically check by and check by date. This has been filled in using this background job processor that comes with Vault Workgroup and Pro. Again, if we look at the drawing, we can see the same thing there. If I try to change state again, you can see that I'm restricted from doing that. That's one of the great features about Navigate, uh, about Vault. And logging in with a different account, sorry about the names, Dave Designer, Mike Manager, these are uh, kind of industry standards now and make it much easier when you're trying to remember logins. Um, if we look at our files and I try to change state under a different account, I've got different rights and access. So again, I can 
use Navigate to have certain jobs happening as we go through this process. So if I knock these files back to work in progress, okay, we can see the files will go to work in progress, they'll just step five it, and we'll see the check by and check by date have been removed. Again, this is Navigate working in the background doing these tasks for us. Let's just move that back on again. Again, maybe I'm doing this on the job processor, or I can actually run these tasks directly on the client without the job processor if I want. Changing from review to released, again, there may be a different set of actions that have to happen at this point. So one of those actions might be that we're updating the approved by information, and we can see that that information is getting put into our file automatically. The other thing that we may want to do is start looking at outputting PDFs, step files, and other types of secondary file formats. We may want to look at exporting out the bill of materials at this point automatically as part of the workflow. And Navigate Vault allows us to do that. Now, these tasks run on the job processor, so they do take a second to run. Um, so what I'm going to do is just dive into Navier and take a look at some of the settings that we have within here so that we can see how this all works. <coughs> so this is Navigate Vault. This is the administration view of Navigate. Uh, you install it on whichever machines you want to. Navigate comes with the admin section and also comes with a user uh, install that we install on all the machines using Vault. In here you can see we've got actions, custom actions and action sets. And if I go to actions, you can see that we have uh, different actions split down into three groups, data export, secondary formats and property updates. Let's look at the secondary file formats. You can see I've got a variety of different uh, file types. And from those file types, I'm able to generate additional types of um, files. So for instance, from a part file, maybe I want to be able to have the option to generate a DXF. And what I can do is just right click on the part and say, create a DXF. And what we end up with is a list of options that we can just fill in. These options are very easy to fill in, um, but are very powerful. So if we look at some of these, we can manually allow a DXF to be created, or we can say that actually this can only happen as part of the state change. We can also say that we can, act, we can create the DXF, but only if certain conditions are true. So one of those conditions may be that the state has to be released. We can publish the DXF directly out to a network. So maybe I want to publish to a particular folder on my computer or on the network. I can publish into Vault, or I can say, actually, I don't want a copy of this DXF in Vault. I just want it out on the network. Maybe I have a, a laser cutter that's going to pick up on that DXF, and I, I want to output that. If we're outputting it to the network, do we want it to have the same file name as inside Vault? Again, I could say no, and I could start configuring this. I could say the file name that we want is something like the part number, maybe the revision after that, and finally, maybe just to make certain, I can output with the state. So when I create a DXF um, on my network, it will be named with the part number, the revision, and the state to make it clear to everyone what type of file I want. That's as complex as the setup for Navigate Vault gets, is really just filling in these properties. If I want to run this automatically as part of a state change, then I use something called that action sets. And again, I can create as many action sets as I want for various types of files. So parts, assemblies, drawings, AutoCAD files, Word and Excel documents, and any other type of file that we want. To generate an action set, right click, say that I want a new action set, and again, fill in the information. So I might want to say here that I want to create a DXF um, file. I might say that I want this to happen whenever a part file is released. Or maybe I want to say, well, it only happens for a particular life cycle 
on a particular state change. So maybe I only want it to happen when I go from review to release. And then finally, when do we want the secondary file format to actually uh, be generated? And we have three ways that we can do this. We can run it on the job processor. So the job processor will just do it when it gets to it. We can run it on the client before it actually does the state change, or we can run it on the client after it does the state change. These are quite important, these pre and post events, because certain times if we're writing a property into the file, we want to uh, write that while we have editing access to that file. So in this case, I might say, well, actually, using the job processor, we're going to find our um, secondary file format, DXF, and I'm going to add it into here. And also, let's create a step file at the same time and hit OK. And that's all there is to it. As I release a part file, it will now create these two uh, document types. Hit OK. Once I restart my client, that will go through. Okay. So whilst we've been talking, job processor is run in our Bolt. And we can see that inside Bolt, we now have appearing a PDF. This has been generated by the system automatically. If I look at that PDF, we can see that the revision table is up to date with today's date and with the uh, user that moved it through to approved. We can see that the title block's up to date. And if I look at the drawing, I'll be able to actually see that it's attached that PDF as an attachment to the original file. On top of that, Navigate's done some other jobs as well. So if we look at our output folder, what we'll see is that that PDF has been output to the network, but has a completely different name to the one inside our vault. The one inside the vault's using the same file name as our drawing. The one outside the vault's using our part number, our revision, and state. In addition, Navigate Vault in this case has output the CSV file of our bill of materials. I'm not using items in vault. In the background, Navigate's firing up Inventor and using Inventor to output this information. We can output whatever properties we need to in whatever order we want. And we can output with some information that Inventor doesn't currently allow us to output. One of the main ones that we get asked for, and it's quite important for those of you using SAP, is parent part number. So we can actually include that as part of our export. By being able to export in the format that we want, with the columns in the order that we want, and we can define the column headings that we want as well, this allows us to create a file that we can pull into our other systems, whether it's a PLM or an ERP system. Uh, again, a lot of you, you may be doing this already. You, you would be able to set up maybe a watch folder and automatically pull in these generated files, say, every five or 10 minutes. So Navigate Vault's doing quite a lot of work for us. And if I take the file and move it from work in progress, uh, from release back to work in progress, we'll see that the, it doesn't stop there. It carries on no matter what state change we're going through. Okay. So in this case, I've gone back to work in progress. I'm just going to fire up my job processor. It kicks in every minute on mine. F5. And you can see again, by going back to work in progress, we bump the revision to revision B, our check by and our approved by information has been cleared out, and the properties have automatically synchronized. One of the common things I get coming up on our support desk is that people are saying, well, we're moving a file from release to work in progress, but the job processor hasn't been able to actually synchronize the properties yet. So when it comes around to the users opening the file in Inventor, they're not updating the properties correctly, and therefore they're not able to push the file on in its life cycle. And that's purely down to timing. It's because the job processor hasn't been able to manage that, get around to that task yet. By using Navigate, we can completely bypass the job processor should we want to, and we can actually run that change on the client at that point. We can see that the PDF in, Nav in Vault is currently saying release day. That's because that is the latest release drawing. As I push my drawing through the, the life cycle and release B, that PDF will update to say release B as well. 
<coughs> so you can see, hopefully already, that there are certain advantages to being able to automate certain tasks within your uh, life cycle. And we can actually pull a lot of the manual work you're doing and, and automate that. But what about other sort of tasks that we do, maybe not all the time, or we only want to do at certain times? Well, let's take uh, an example. I'm going to go into my parts folder and just find a file. And I'm going to take this drawing and right click on it. And what you'll see is that Navigate adds in a couple of additional uh, menu items. In here, we can manually run any of our actions, custom actions, or action sets, should we want to. So maybe on a, a drawing file, I want to be able to generate files. And I can set what type of files I want to generate. So one of those files might be that I want to generate an as-built DWG copy of this inventor drawing. Um, as-built, as some of you uh, are aware, um, or site-specific drawings, as others call it, uh, are typically done by opening up an inventor file, converting it to an AutoCAD DWG, and saving it back into Vault. And the reason for that is we don't want to create lots of duplicate assemblies of our inventor data. We have other departments that are maybe using this data as well. So those of you using Inventor Publisher that need to be able to use uh, a DWF but can't use the hidden DWFs within Vault, we could actually get Navigate Vault to automatically generate a DWF that you can use within that product. Okay. If I take the as built for now, I get the choice of either running it on the client or sending it to the job processor. I'm going to send it to the job processor. I'll just um, set that going. And you can see it's picked up on it straight away. Okay. There are additional tasks again that we may want to look at. So we may want to do data exports. If you select a, a part file or a, a, a drawing and do a data export, it may not show anything. But if we swap to a subassembly, right click and say a data export, it may give us different options. And again, these exports, although you might see them, it may only run them if certain criteria or certain properties exist in that file. Finally, the other sort of thing that we can do, and one of my favorites, is the ability to run custom actions. And Navigate comes with a variety of custom actions. One of my favorites is this one called a drawing list. Now, again, a question we get asked all the time is that you're pulling parts and sub-assemblies into your design from all over Vault. That's great. All those files have multiple drawings associated with them, but they're all stored everywhere. How can I generate a list of those drawings? How can I see the state of all those drawings and run a report on it? Well, if I do a drawing list, what I'm able to do is put in a project name, I'll call it demo for now, hit OK, and Navigate Vault, using one of these custom actions, can go away and actually generate a list of all the drawings within the Vault <coughs> that are associated with this design and generate a spreadsheet for me to be able to see these. So you can see it's not taken long to do. I end up with a folder, and within that folder, we can see a list of all our drawings and the current states. We also have a, a drawing register that's been created automatically based on a template uh, that we can define, and it creates that report that you can maybe then send to a project manager, or maybe a project manager is running this for themselves. These files, because the shortcuts, it doesn't matter where they are in bulk, I can right click, I can jump to it at any point. Okay. Um, Job process has finished creating that as built drawing. So if I go back to my parts folder, you can see I've, I've made it very clear with the file name that it's an as built, but you can see it's generated that AutoCAD as built drawing for us. Um, you can create the file name however you want, but we can also see it's not linked to anything. Okay, although we could link it to the original file. We don't have to do this one file at a time. Using the drawing list, I'll be able to select all these files, right click, go to custom actions and do whatever I want to with this. I could do it from the drawing list, I could do it from searches and, and run any actions that we want. One of the actions might be that I want to update the title block as an example in all of my drawings. Uh, again, we have customers that come to us and said, 
Um, you know, our company's been bought, so we've changed the logo or we're changing and updating our title block and adding new information in. How can I apply that to all my historical data so it all goes through the system correctly? Well, one of the ways we can do this is to use iLogic. And hopefully, there'll be a few of you that are familiar with iLogic already. Let's just open up our drawing. Okay, so we can see our drawing here. With our logic, we can create uh, forms. So I may have a toolkit of functions that I can run. Um, and these are based on rules. And these rules are bits of code that are written by ourselves. Uh, it's not like full programming. Um, it's very much a tool for engineers to do programming rather than programmers to do engineering. We use it a lot, not just to automate 3D designs, but to automate the tasks within Inventor. To give you an example of that, one of the tasks that I might want to automate is that I want to add in symbol just saying not released for manufacture. I may have a different task that removes that. Another task I might have might check my drawing template and swap out the title block if it's not the current one used by my drawing template. And if we look at Navigate Vault, when I take any of these uh, drawings, if I go to Custom Actions, I have the ability to actually update and add this information and run these rules from within Vault. I can either run them manually or I can run them as part of the state change. So if I take this drawing here and I change this drawing from release to quick change as an example, what Navigate will now do is open up that file in Inventor, run that rule as part of that state change, and then check that drawing back in with whatever changes it needed to, to run. Uh, this is really powerful stuff, and we're seeing a lot of use and a lot of interest in this. Um, more and more people are using iLogic, and again, I, I, something that we get told quite regularly is, it's fine having iLogic in Inventor, but Inventor is just a tool. We run. We need to run things as part of our life cycles, and that's what we're able to do here. This um, <coughs> our logic rule might take a little bit of time to run. Depends what you're trying to do. You might be running multiple our logic rules, but if you can see that's generated a quick change. If I go to preview, we can see it's put that splash on the title block. Um, just update the visual on that one. Again, we might. <coughs> Pardon me. We might using Navigate get Vault to actually update the visual at the same time, so we can see the the change within Vault. Okay. Once I go from Quick Change back to Released, we might remove that watermark. So again, we can set Navigate to uh, manage that iLogic rule. And um, if you're quite lucky and you're new to Vault, we could also do this with a property. We could get Navigate to write to a property that puts uh, a banner across your drawing saying that something's obsolete or not obsolete, uh, should you want to. So it's a really powerful tool that is going to hopefully work with your processes. Okay, so we'll let that uh, update. <coughs> Just while that's running, um, one of the other uh, things that Navigate Vault gives us the, to, um, the ability to do is to create property cards. Now, property cards are something that we get asked about quite regularly with Vault. We have our property um, grid at the side of the screen, but it's not really relevant to, to everyone, and some people get a little bit confused by it. So what we've done with Navigate Vault is try to create a very customizable, very simple property card for you to be able to set based on the file type or on the category of the file to see the properties that you want. Um, we can also do this using data standard um, that comes with Vault. The data standard will require us to do a lot of coding to be able to build in these property cards. And we can do some really advanced stuff with it because of that. Navigate Vault is a very simple, very quick solution to generate a property card. Um, so it's a different tool for a different type of company. Um, those that don't want to throw a lot of time and resource at generating a property card probably want to use something like the Navigate version 
rather than data standard. Those of you that want a more comprehensive tool may want to use the data standard version. Okay, so if we go back to Vault, we can see that splash screen's appeared now. Uh, if I go to the property card window, you can see that we have access to all the properties within Vault that I've allowed. That can be set from our configuration window. So again, if I log in to, to navigate uh, through the administration console, down at the bottom, we can see property management. And for different categories of files, I can right click, add a property, and pick what property from Vault I want to add in to my system. Next time I restart my Vault client, that change will take effect. Those properties, we can say whether they are read-only or editable and what width they are and what order they're in as well. But if I want to take this DWG, I might want to take that description, add a bit of text to it. And when I hit save, it will go through and it will actually change that uh, property. If I just update, you can see it's changed in the property grid. So rather than take this, have to come up, find a little icon and change the selected property, I find it much easier just to change the property in the window here, change multiple properties if I want, hit save and have those go through for me. Okay. So property cards, uh, again, another key feature, um, but really, they're just a nice to have. The, the ability to automate tasks through Vault um, are, are the real power to this product. One of the other things that we mentioned earlier is the job processor. And one of the things that we can do is use a tool that comes with Navigate Vault to help administrate the job processor as well. Those of you that are administrators that do use the job processor, you probably spend quite a lot of time dealing with the tasks there. So what can we do with our job queue tools? Well, we can take control of that job processor. Those of you that do multi-site replication, we can centralize the queue so that all the jobs happen on one job processor. We don't have to have a job processor at every site. We can automatically resubmit any jobs that fail, or if certain jobs fail, we can delete them out of the queue automatically. If we resubmit them, we can say how many times, and then if they still fail after that, we can automatically send an email out to the administrator to say, you want to have a look at this file. <coughs> job queue tools you install with your job processor. You can see mine's running, it's just down in this little bottom corner. We say what username and password we're gonna to use to log into Vault, what sites we're logging in with, and put in any ma mail settings that we want as well. To actually set it to clean up the job queue, we have different options. We can set it to do tasks based on jobs that are pending, jobs that are currently processing, or jobs that are error. So one of the most common ones is sync errors. I can right click and create a new task within here. And what it will do is it'll open up and I can pick which type of task I want to run uh, to look at. And I can look for descriptions of certain results and do something based on those. So something I might want to do is if a certain job happens, I might want to send an email. An example of that, I might use Navigate to output a bill of materials. I might want to send an email to the factory to say there's a new bill of materials there. Or maybe I've got a document controller, I can get Navigate to send an email automatically to say, well actually there's a new set of PDFs that exist in, on the network for you to send to a client. Where it's a job that we don't want, like the non-tip versions, we can automatically delete, resubmit, and if after resubmitting it, it still fails, we can either delete the job or we can set it to go to another state. So maybe we create a state in our life cycle called error, and we can actually get the files to move to that error state so that we can run a search, find all the errors in Vault, and actually do something with those jobs. Um, so it's really powerful little bit of kit, this one. But it really allows us to take control of that job processor. <coughs> one of the other things that it allows us to do as well is schedule startup and end times for the job processor. So those of you that have quite a big queue that builds up during the day and you want to run job processors at night, 
um, you could set up a schedule so that the job processor starts at a certain time, maybe after the user goes home. If the job takes longer than a certain time, so let's say 30 minutes in this case for very large files or more likely five minutes, we can actually set the job queue tools to automatically shut down the job processor and any other processes that it's using and restart again so that we're not tying up the, the processor all night uh, and it can get on with the next job. So from an administration point of view, this can be uh, quite a useful tool for just taking care of everything while you're not there. Okay. At any point, if we want to, we can set the polling interval. How often is it checking the job queue for these errors? We can override that and just run to any point. You can see that any errors that it does find, so we can see there there's one job that came up and it had an error, it's actually removed that from the queue because it knows it's not needed. Okay. So Navier Vault, as I say, works alongside your Vault workflows. We're all using Vault workflows. We know that they uh, really do allow us to control our life cycles on our documents, but there are additions and enhancements that we would like to, to, to augment uh, to get the most out of the software. At Symmetry, we believe that Naviate can be a real uh, powerful tool to allow you to do that uh, and uh, really you know, would ask you to consider looking at how can this help and can it uh, help in the areas you need it to. Okay? If you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer any. Just type them into the chat window. Um, otherwise, if you want to email me, um, we have um, info at symmetry.co.uk that you can email in and any questions will get answered. Um, apart from that, I think that's it for now. Okay, so I'm just waiting to see if there are any questions that come in. <coughs> One question that we've got um, that's come in privately is how long does it typically take to actually set up Navigate? Um, well, typically it will take about a day of time um, to look at your workflows and to actually build in all the functions that you want. Remember, we have to capture how you want, what you want to happen at the right time and get it to happen in the right way based on your security. So it typically takes a, a day of time, that one. Okay. okay, another one that's come in. Can bombs be exported from AutoCAD using Navier? Um, I'll give you the honest answer on that one. I'm not sure. Um, the, the reason I'm not sure is I don't really use AutoCAD as much as I do Inventor. Um, now, Navier allows us to take the um, secondary file formats. <coughs> Pardon me. So if I log into the administration window and I look at the, the data export, so there's actions, there's data export. You can see the data exports currently for drawings, parts, and assemblies. Okay. If we need to be able to pull from the, uh, the, the AutoCAD uh, mechanical bills and materials or AutoCAD electrical bombs, I'm sure that can be built into the software. One of the beauties of this is that it is our software. So either we can build it in as core functionality, or if it's just something that you want for your company, what we're able to do is actually create these custom actions for you so that we can build that in. So it should be possible, assuming it's uh, possible in the API. I, I just need to check with the, uh, the team um, to, to, to make sure that that's actually open to do. But from what I can see, it should be possible. Good question. Anyone else? Okay. Just while you're all madly typing away, another one that you may want, and again, we get asked for quite a lot. There is a custom action that comes with Navigate to send an email automatically. So those of you that are on Bolt Workgroup uh, or on Bolt Professional and don't use your um, ECOs or don't have ECOs, as we move files on in the workflow, we can actually email out um, to whoever we want or distribution list to say that this is now ready for checking uh, or approved 
Uh, maybe it's a revision change and we want to notify the factory. Okay. How easy is it to export bombs from Inventor to SAP? Okay, good question. Well, when we're creating a secondary file format for a data export, okay, I'll just create a new one. I create a new data export. I can set up all my conditions. So where is it? What type of target are we running to? CSP, SQL, XML. Um, if we write to an XML, we can basically format in whatever way that we want. We can output to a network location and we can set what column headings we want to see, if any. For the properties, we just right click and add properties in and we can either pick bomb properties, in which case we can have any of these, or we can pick the properties from the system, from the metadata, and we can pick any of the properties involved. Finally, we may also want to pick a computed value and we may want to pick username or current date or something like that. <coughs> um, by doing that, we can output a file to the network and SAP, it is possible, I believe, to set up a watch holder that will automatically pull that data in. The other option that you have is because the file is generated from SAP, when you log in, you have the ability to load in that CSV file directly. Um, most people that are using SAP do look at being able to pull in CSV files or able to automate that portion of it. So um, it really depends on your setup, but that's something that we can look, like, uh, look at with you. Okay. Another question that we've got, publishing files, PDFs for IDWs, for example, automatically based on status change. Looks good, but can you base it on the IPT and the IAM's file template? Specifically, can we automatically publish IDWs of sheet metal files to a folder called the XX? And then IDWs of a normal IPT and IAM file to different folders in, <coughs> in, in Bolt or, or on the system. Um, yes, it should be possible. Now, we may have to be a little bit um, creative in how we do some things. So we know that from a part file, we can generate the DXF. But from a drawing as well, we can also generate that same uh, a DXF should we want to. By generating that DXF, okay, if we take a look at it, we've got a whole load of settings, whether it goes into Vault, onto the network, uh, whether it looks for a file name, or whether it looks for a sheet with a particular name. So the way that customers that are doing this at the moment do this is they have a sheet with a particular name inside their drawing that can automatically be used to export out that sheet. And we can either export out all sheets or a named sheet or just the first sheet only. And again, we have the export options for DXF that we want. If you currently don't have a sheet with a particular name in it, that's not a problem. You may have a lot of existing data. So how can we do that? Well, one of the things that we're able to do is we could create an iLogic routine that runs on a drawing, and if that drawing is associated to a sheet metal part, automatically fills in a property that then this can call. And that can be automated as part of the process. So that property can fill in at this point. Uh, where are we? So we can uh, yeah, change a property maybe inside a, a part. We could add a, a new update, pick the property that we want to fill in. Maybe we've got an iLogic routine that we talked about, so I can add a new iLogic routine and give it the name to a path, and that could look up that information, see what the part file is, if it's a sheet metal, ensure that property is filled in, and then we move from work in progress through to our check state. Therefore, when we release, we can get that information out. So it is possible with this. If you want vice versa, it's the same deal. Okay. No problem. Okay. Any more? Okay. Does property update work with AutoCAD? Yep, we can update any property for any file inside Vault. So the property updates aren't tied to a particular type of file. Um, so for instance, I've got one here that, although it's called DWG check by, that's just the name, I've right clicked and I can update multiple properties at the same time. So I'm updating check by information with the Vault username, 
check by date using the current date. And then from my action set, I could say the AutoCAD DWG, tell it I want a new action. I could say when it's released, using the job processor, I want to automatically fill in my approved by information. Oh, and then actually synchronize that with AutoCAD. That will now happen whenever I release that data. <coughs> and hopefully you've seen there, we've made quite a major change and added or, or removed quite a chunk of our workflow in seconds. We haven't got any more questions that have come in yet, but um, what I'll probably do is look at ending this session now. Uh, we have got it recorded, so um, hopefully we should get it available onto uh, our YouTube site, Symmetry UK YouTube site. Um, or if you want to contact us, again, please just email info at symmetry.co.uk. Um, if you want any more information, so on there, there is information on our website. Um, if you want to look at anything more in particular, um, we can sort of arrange that and we can um, discuss any custom work that we want at that point as well. Okay, so from me, I'd like to say thank you for uh, attending and um, I hope yes. you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Chris. Your voice held out at last, <laughs> at least, so thank you for that. Yes, if anybody's got any questions, um, contact us back on info at Symmetry Co. UK, or you can contact your sales contacts in Symmetry or CADQ if you're in the Nordics. So thank you for your time, and thank you, Chris. Thank you. Cheers.